Kate, Karen, sorry, <laughs> with his wife Karen, um, started. Let's start over because I need my glasses. <laughs> All right, Dr. Philip Leifert, with his wife Karen, located. That's not located, Dr. Karen, Dr. Leifert. Let me get my glasses. <laughs> No, it's in my. Yep. All right, hello. I know many of us can't read without the glasses at all, right? So don't want to say anything, no, okay? Yeah, yes, okay. Try to make do with what I can see from here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Dr. Philip, <laughs> Dr. Philip Leifert, along with his wife Karen, hosted the Dr. Philip Gospel Show, which aired weekly on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. at WKB Radio, 1680 a.m. Orlando, Florida, on December 26, 2020. He he and Karen, sorry, hold their final broadcast after 15 years of service. Previously, Dr. Leifert served as senior pastor of the Okoye Foursquare Church, as well as being the director of ministry and Christian education of the Foursquare Orlando Metro District. He holds his doctorates in Christian education and Christian counseling from the Southwest Bible College and Seminary. Dr. Leifert is also a retired estate agent and a retired insurance sales professional who specializes in Medicare and life insurance products. He still holds his designation as a chartered life insurance and a chartered financial consultant and life underwriter training council fellow. On March 9, 2014, Dr. Leifert was elected as the ninth president of the Jamaican American Association of Central Florida, a 501c3 nonprofit um, organization serving the communities of Central Florida, the Jamaican diaspora, and of course, um, a ho his homeland, Jamaica. Currently, Dr. Leifert lives in Riverview, Florida. His wife, Karen, serves as a senior uh, trust manager for Chuit Financial Corporation. Uh, there are two adult children, Philip Juni and Christopher, also lives in Florida. Something I'll tell you about Dr. Leifert that he did not include here. <laughs> He is a recording artist. I, years ago, I played his music in a radio program on Saturday mornings myself. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Philip Leifat, who will work you through the rest of this evening's activities. Well, thank you very much. 
Miss Marjorie Brown. Let's give Miss Marjorie Brown a round of applause. You know, um, in November 1985, Ms. Mar Mrs. Marjorie Brown invited several individuals to meet at her home in Orlando to discuss the possibility of forming a society for people of Caribbean heritage residing in Central Florida. Do you remember that day, November 1985? Mrs. Brown, there was Leroy Barnes, Marjorie Brown, Desmond Brown, Joy Gale, Emmanuel King, Olive King, Dr. Ken Richards, Hewlett Scott, Vernon Scott, William Scott, Martell. Anybody know the great Martell? Martell Taylor? Oh, you know Lady D. He's the better half. And after <laughs> much discussion, a society was formed called the West Indian Civic Association. The name has been changed to the Caribbean American Society of Central Florida. That's when I came down here and knew it. And then today it's known as the Jamaican American Association of Central Florida. So Mrs. Marjorie Brown, you are going down in history. Give a round of applause. <laughs> While you have your hands together, let's give another round of applause to that great rendition that was offered by Miss Raquel Wiles. Miss Raquel Wiles. You know, usually you hear that singing on the radio, but to hear it in person, it's different, <laughs> I'll tell you. And we have got someone else in the, in, in the house who is going to really sing with a little bit of a more Caribbean flavor. And I know you're, you're waiting for her. Yes, some of um, uh, that um, bunny rugs rubbed off on her in more ways than one. So listen out for Miss Adriana Clark. Hey, talking about that, um, I really am not comfortable in wearing masks. I don't think men were born to wear masks. <laughs> but we just have to because of the situation, eh? I remember the story about this guy here. He and his wife went out, they were wearing masks, and when they came back, and the lady who came into the house took off his mask, and he said, but this is not my wife. <laughs> Be careful out there. <laughs> make, make sure that you carry <laughs> the right wife home. <laughs> well, you know, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto us, let us enter in the house of the Lord. And we want to just, um, sort, sort of like a little bit late. Have you ever had dinner yet? And by the time you have halfway through the appetizer, you just stop and have the prayer? I hope it's not like that, but I'm going to invite my good friend Dale McBean, Pastor Dale McBean, the Fountain of Truth International Ministries, to come up and say our opening prayer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dale McBean. And Pastor is here. He's actually going on a cruise. All right, I'm going to tell the truth now. He's going on a cruise tomorrow, but he made it here, and he's going to make some more uh, commitments before he goes on a cruise. Give it up for a man of God. Dr. Lee Fat himself. Good evening, everyone. I am delighted to be here, but... I want to acknowledge all the different members of the clergy, the pastor of this church, but I could not stand on this platform without gracing Dr. Sam Vassal and Lady Vassal this day. It is an honor. It's an honor. And Reverend Benji, it's good to see you and your beautiful wife as well. Continue to bring greetings to your family, please. To your son, I know, especially we met the last time and we connected and we haven't kept in touch, but bring greetings to him as well. I am going to change around a little bit and I am going to do an opening prayer, but I'm also going to do a prayer for Jamaica. If you don't mind standing for a few minutes, please. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guide us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil powers. Be our light 
through countless hours. To our leaders, great defenders, grant true wisdom from above. Justice, truth, be ours forever. Jamaica land, we love. We will humbly come before you in repentance. You would say, if my people who are called by thy name will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. Father, you said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal the land. Lord, we are people calling on your name. We are people coming before you and repenting on behalf of the sin of the nation. And Lord, we present before you the soul of the nation that we love, which is grievously ill at this time. But Father, we believe that your love and your compassion and great mercy, Lord, surpass the darkness that surrounds the nation at this time. We pray, O God, that as your children, as we supplicate and stand in intercession for this great nation, that you will shine one more time upon this nation, Lord, and that you will live, O God, the desolate and those that rule in dark places, Lord God, to give up one more time. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we would confess, Lord, and commit to you, our nation, we come against the wickedness and, and the rebellion, Lord God, that we have departed from your ways, O God, and we have looked to other ways, but God, in your mercy, one more time, we would ask that you would touch our beloved nation. Father, we apologize. We repent, Lord, for being wrathful and carefree about the nature and resources that you have provided for the land that has made it so beautiful and rich. God, we come right now, and Father, we come against the, the gods and heirs, Lord, and the territories uh, that are ruled by your territorial spirits, uh, and Lord, cause the innocents to continue to live in fear. Father, we pray that your power will send back, Lord God, this back in the name of Jesus. Father, we come right now, and we call you the Prince of Peace. Let your peace that pass it all understanding encompass the nation at this time. God uphold all men of influence that work against the peace of the nation right now in the name of Jesus. Let your unstoppable power reach from the highest to the lowest in that nation. Cause courage to come to our leaders to confront the consequences of evil, Lord God, in our nation and allow peace one more time to be in the harmony of our nation. Father, we pray that you will touch the security officers and those who have compromised and betrayed the trust of the heart of their office to protect and to serve the people that they will one more time come and recognize that they are called in a place, Lord God, to serve the nation. Father, we come against all social injustice and unfair practices that continues to bother the nation, that Lord continues to bring misfortune and bring mistrust within the nation. Father, we pray for courage in the hearts of leaders to fear your God and Lord to honor your Lord and to respect the promise and the gift of the office of leadership over that nation. Father, we pray that you cancel every negative report that has brought darkness around the nation at this time. We pray, God, that you give organized strategy for those men and women, Lord God, who have opp um, opportunity to position themselves in influential places that will cause the nation to become better. Father, we declare and decree to the Lord that, Lord God, Jamaica will be a beacon of light to the world one more time. Father, we declare that Jamaica will have so much space of honor one more time that godly men and women will rise up and serve in that nation in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that the leaders of our nation, Lord God, will one more time go to a place and repent and go and seek after the righteousness and the right to prevail. Father, we pray that one day Oh, Lord God, that the citizens of our country will continue to live happy and proud and call it this is the land of our birth. Father, we pray one more time, Lord, and declare, Lord God, that we are saying law of leadership across our nation, from great or small, who recognize, Lord God, that they have been 
been raised up by God. That promotion only comes from you, O God. Father, we pray for a new covenant over this nation. We pray for love and faith and hope. We pray for the church across the nation that they will stand still, O God, and from their pulpit continue to affirm righteousness, O God. We pray, O God, that they will not compromise, that the people will take one stand one more time and declare promise by promise that this is the land of our birth. We pray that there will be a mark of salt and light over that nation one more time. We pray for the governing hands of men and women who lead over that nation, that they will walk in honesty and walk in godliness and fairness and lead that nation in peace. We ask all of these things in mighty name, but the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Father, we thank you for this evening's service. We thank you for the men and women who have come from far and near just to be a part of an event, Lord. But this event also marked in the calendar of time and in our hearts, Lord, an opportunity where we will cry, where we will stand, where we will make our voice be known for our God, the gold, the black and the green. We pray, O God, that Lord, it will not just be a flag for us, but it will be a symbol, O God, of something, of a nation that, Lord God, have brought greatness and have brought it across the shores of this United States of America. Father, we pray for the men and women this evening that will participate in this program. We pray wisdom, we pray guidance, we pray strength, we pray for favor, we pray for your set servant that will bring that church to encourage us this evening. I pray, God, that as I would listen on the byways going to this, Lord God, on the next assignment, I pray, God, that my heart will be lifted by the words of encouragement from him this evening. I continue to pray for the MC and those, Lord God, who are tempting to participate in this program, that it will bring glory, honor, and praise to you, and that, Lord, all of us, when we leave here, would have been encouraged for the moment we have come together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Is the mic working? I mean, all that Holy Ghost power just <laughs> broke up the mic there, my father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give uh, Pastor Mark Bean a, a round of applause. And he, he has to step out, so we just pray in the name of Jesus that he'll have traveling mercies, that God may bless his going out and coming in from this time henceforth, even forevermore. And we're looking forward to that great message by Pastor Robert Benjamin. How many people are looking forward to that? I know I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Is Bishop Goburn in the house? Uh, he was slotted next, but um, we'll patiently wait and um, we'll continue with the program. Hallelujah. You know, um, uh, Pastor McBean said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that's 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and pray and seek my face, you know, then the Lord will hear. But before he, he hears, we have to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. Uh, oh, hallelujah. I know he's given the charge, and I'll follow up with giving that charge too. And I know that every pastor in the land will give the charge. Humble yourselves and pray and seek the face. We cannot depend on other people to do it. We are the church. We are God's uh, representatives on earth. Uh, because when he called us, he calls us, to workmanship. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Coming up next, we're going to have uh, a... Not a song by me, I can tell you that. <laughs> Although, anybody have heard that albums? We created two albums, you know. Um, I should have brought them here and give them away free. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um,
Um, we're going to have Mr. Joan Edgehill, my great friend here. Unless there was a change. Is that right? Okay. Um, Pastor Dawkins said that there would be an opening to him. Are they ready? Well, all right, praise God. Let's give it up for the North Orlando um, Seventh day Church of God's hymnal and choir. Oh, it's a congregational thing? Okay. And we're all going to sing together to God be the glory. And let's all rise for the opening hymn. To God be the glory. Thank you, Raquel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, my good friend just came in and greeted, greeted me, Bishop Goburn. 
We come a long way back, right, Bishop? Well, yeah, man. From New York days, you know, I remember that was back in the 80s. And I remember he came into um, the Bronx Murphy um, uh, Tabernacle Church with Pastor Thompson. And I saw this young man here with his blue guitar. And he came up. And when he hit those notes and belt out that song, man, I was really thrilled. And still I'm thrilled every time I hear you sing, my brother. Evangelist Goburn, he's known um, in the, by his um, artistry, but he's a pastor of the High Dimension Church of God and Bishop. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bishop Goburn. Praise him. Thank you, Dr. Lee Fett. Greetings, people of God, um, to the officiants, Dr. Dawkins, Dr. Dawkins, and all you wonderful people. Just want to hit this song. I greet you all in the name of him that liveth and was dead, but he's alive forevermore. If you could praise God. Just hit that track for me, Mr. Engineer, if you could, and I'll just give homage to God. Praise him. Take it up for me, thank you, yes. Blood in the trenches, pain of the heart, turmoils and conflicts, tears apart. But grace still sufficient to pardon your past. Too much to live for, yeah. Your souls can't be lost. Now we've come too far. We can't go back now. Passing. The worst sins making a vow. Why we're still standing, he knows the how. For you've come too far not to, leave her. to go back now. Be right there, please. Roadblocks and bridges lying your way may offset your conquest to stray from the gate. But stay fast and don't turn. Please stay the course. If you draw from the source, well, you've come to track, please. You can't go back now, passing the worst scenes, making a vow. Why we? Jesus knows the how, for we've come too far to go back 60 years. Sometimes you feel like you want to give up. The road gets rough sometimes. The tempest on the sea makes more water in the ship than you have out of it. But we cannot stop. We have to persevere no matter what. Tell somebody, I can't go back. Look at somebody, they will understand what you mean. I can't go back, I won't go back. Mr. Engineer, turn the track a little so I can hear it, please. Mm. Roadblocks and bridges may offset your conquest to stray from the gate. Hey. But stand fast and don't turn. Please stay the 
the course. We'll never lose power if we draw from the source. His name is Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody say, no, we've come too far. We can't go back now. We've passed the worst sins. We made him a vow. Why you're still standing? Jesus knows the how. For you come too far to go back now. You've come too far. Hear me. You can't go back now. Passing the worst sins. We made him a vow. Yeah. Now why am I still standing when he made us know? Now we've come too far. Uh -huh to go back now. Oh, we've come too far. Come on, sing it. we come too far. No, we've come too far. No, we've come too far. Yeah. To go back now. I can't go back. I won't go back. Must look ahead. I've come too far. Oh. Hallelujah. Why I had to say, it, man. We need an encore. We need an encore. He's going to give them another track. I had to go back into our old friendship days and say, you got to give us another one, brother. We come too far to turn back now. Man, that's for the preachers in the house. Because you know what we have been through many, many, many years. Hallelujah. Right, Dr. Dawkins? I tell you something, it's not easy to be a pastor. <laughs> Sometimes it's only you alone. Not even the wife with you. You alone. You know, you men know what I'm talking about. I've been there. <laughs> I'm retired now, so thank God for that. Our next item is going to be presentation by... It's Joan Edgehill, former vice president of the Jamaican American Association of Central Florida and now in charge of getting that uh, Jamaican independent 60th ball coming up on the August the 6th. How many people have their tickets? I got mine and four others. Mr. Joan. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And that beautiful song, yes, we've definitely come too far to turn back now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the point where normally I'd be reading um, the proclamation from the prime minister of Jamaica, but he has not actually put that together yet for us. So I'm just going to have to give a few words of encouragement. As we mark the anniversary of Jamaica's 60th independence, its diamond jubilee, we reflect on the brilliance, the resilience, the strength, the beauty, the tenacity, and the fortitude of Jamaica and Jamaicans all over the world. We are all individually diamonds in our own right. Amen? 
We know what it is to struggle, and we know what it is to stay strong. Today, we come to acknowledge our strengths and our weaknesses as a nation. But more than that, we come to praise God and to thank him for his unfailing mercy, his love, his grace, and watching over our beautiful, beautiful island, Jamaica, that we all love so very much, no matter how many years we've lived in another place. Jamaicans remember Jamaica. We just can't forget that beautiful land of ours. Anyway, we come to pray today, and that was a beautiful prayer that we had earlier. We pray for Jamaica, but we also pray for the United States of America, for the surrounding islands of the Caribbean, and for the world. Amen? This last year, in the words of the Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, he said in his message that despite unprecedented times, Jamaica was able to absorb the shock and positioned itself to recover stronger and smarter together. He said we would take, a, it would take, sorry, a joint effort where the government, the private sector, Jamaicans at home in Jamaica, and Jamaicans in the diaspora, as well as other stakeholders, would partner together to realize sustainable development targets for Jamaica. I believe he was right. He was right then, and this still holds true for 2022. Jamaica's theme, as we know, and its battle cry this year, is reigniting a nation for greatness. And when I think of reigniting something, I think of fire, don't you? Catch a fire, is what I think. That's what Jamaicans are saying they want for Jamaica. Our church service today, we used a slight variation of that theme. So we're reigniting a people for godliness. Because we know that Jamaica, on the whole, is a godly country. And um, as long as we humble ourselves, as our brother said, and pray, he will heal our land. So all of this is possible in Jesus' name. Things will turn around. So let's all get fired up. Amen? Well, we have more celebrations coming up. August 6th, we will be celebrating some more. And we want everybody to turn up and turn out at the Rosen Plaza Hotel on International Drive, our speaker, Dr. Dwayne Dice, our MCs, Adriana Clark, who is in our midst, she'll be singing later, and Mr. Lewis Witter, uh, their host of Caribbean Rhythms Radio, DJ Charlie Brown, and so on. Anyway, there are tickets in the back, so I won't go through everything, but we want you to come out and have a good time. And this evening, we want you all to have a good time in the precious and wonderful and marvelous name of Jesus, our Christ. Thank you. Let's give Miss Joan Hedgehill a round of applause. <laughs> Praise God. So we have, you know, as you know, anytime you have a program, you're going to have to make some uh, little adjustments. We made some adjustments before, some adjustments are coming up. But um, I want to introduce um, a great singer. I've heard her sing before, and I've heard her daddy sing before. He said something like, and if you're thirsty, I will drink you, quench you with my love. And if you're hungry, I will feed you with my words. And all I ask is that you love as I do. Try Jalla. 
I tried, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Adriana Clark, if you have heard of Bunny Rugs, well, here's Bunny Rugs 2. Come on up. <laughs> Young lady is doing a, a lot. She's been featured everywhere and also has her own radio show. So get out of here. <laughs> Amen. Good evening, church. Amen. Well, I first want to uh, greet you all in the name of Jesus. I want to greet the father and the mother of this house. I'm here at North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist. And I want to greet, um, the, of course, the head, Mrs. Marjorie Brown, and every leader, every member of the Jamaican American Association of Central Florida. So please give a round of applause for yourselves tonight. Thank you so much for always um, allowing me to come and worship with you and to celebrate with you and always including me in such a great organization that helps me celebrate my culture both of them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And Dr. Lee Fat, you did a great job with the Try Jaw Love, but <laughs> now I feel like I have, to, I have to sing a little bit of it to give you a little bunny taste to it. Amen. <laughs> and you know, those, the lyrics of that song actually are ringing so true. As we discussed today, reigniting a people for godliness. And the lyrics say, a lonely soul was I without direction? I didn't know which way that I had to go. I sought the clues from life's unanswered questions. My mind's heart had to know. And I heard you call while wandering through the darkness. I'd walk a million miles to find that endless voice that speaks to me. When I am in temptation, echoing my choice. Then he said, seek ye shall find. I've been with you through all times. And if you're thirsty, I will quench you with my love. And if you hunger, I will feed you with my word. And all I ask of you is that you love as I do. And if you lose your way, I'll lead you to my love. From a sinful life, I'll cleanse you in my love. For creation bears a witness of my love. You should know it's time for the world to try John love. The only love that can bring peace is John John love. So won't we try? Try John love. Love. Woo. That was about to get me in the spirit right there. Amen. What such powerful lyrics. Amen. That's such powerful lyrics that we need to hear right now. But I did want to share just a quick song with you as we uh, talk about we're here praying and we're also using our faith. And the Bible says when two or more are gathered, there he is. And if two or more can agree on a thing, so shall it be. So as we stay here connected and agreeing on one thing, we're going to declare that we also believe for it. Amen. Somebody say, I believe for it. That we believe that God can do it. We believe that he can turn around the nation of Jamaica. We believe that he can set us on higher ground. That we can be the beacon shining in the world. Amen. So I know it's a song, hopefully, that we all know. And if you feel free, please feel free to sing it along with me. Amen. Amen. We can play this song. Thank you. mountain can't be moved. They 
say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do That there is power in your name And we've heard that there is no way through And we've heard the tides will never change but they haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracles. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. Oh, God, we believe. Oh, yes. Mm. We hope that hope is ever lost for there is still an empty grave God we believe no matter what there is power in your name so much power in your name so move the immovable break the unbreakable God we believe God we believe for it from the impossible we'll see a miracles God we believe God we believe for it move the immovable break the God, we believe, God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracles. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Oh, for Jamaica, we believe for it. Cause you are the way where there seems to be no way. God, we trust in you. God, you have the final say. You are the way where there seems to be no way. We trust in you. God, you have the final say. If you said it, I believe it. If you said it, it is done. Cause you said it, so I believe it. You said it, so it is done, yes. You said it, so I believe it. If you said it, then it is you spoke it, so we believe it. You said it, so it is done. Oh, it is done, it is done, it is done. It. Somebody just begin to decree, it is done. In Jamaica, it is done. God, you will, it is done. If you said we believe it, you said it, God, it is done, it is done, it is done, it is done. Come on, somebody decree, it is done, it is done. Somebody shout, we believe for it, amen, thank you so much, amen, it is done.
Praise God. Hallelujah. How many people believe? You know, it actually took me a long while to believe that, you know, um, that if God said it, it's already done. We just have to just uh, remain calm and bask in the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I'm not talking about no prosperity gospel here. I'm talking about the word of God, which is true and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of soul, of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. And nothing is hid from that. For as he examines everything. The program is going to go like this um, in rapid succession. I'm going to have uh, Dr. Pat Smith, former president of the, a former president of the Jamaican American Association, uh, to come up and read a scripture. I think she'll be reading from Psalm 100. And uh, then we're going to have Bishop Goldberg and come back again, get the place ready to introduce the speaker, the senior pastor of the Metro West Na Church of the Nazarene, Dr. Benjamin. And now, Dr. Pat Smith, my favorite nutritionist. Come on up. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. We are in the house of the Lord. And the word is part of worship. So this evening, I'll be reading for you Psalm 100. It reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise ye the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. May he add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap for Dr. Smith. Ready, Bishop? All right. Put your hands together for Bishop Easton Goburn. Give him one more praise, please. Glory to God. He's so sweet. I trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. I'm going to ask Mr. Engineer to hit me again. This time, you know, I tell him to hit me hard. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise God. Get up in the house, please. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Put your hands together for me. Help me keep a beat. And we come to you. Thank you. We come to you to worship at your feet. Come on, people, celebrate. Yeah, 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 yeah. We place you 
at the highest place. Lift him up, lift him up, for you alone are the great high priest. Please leave it there, sir. We place you, let me hear you, high above all is. Just wave those hands above your head, all is. Yeah. As we come to you, we come to you to worship your great name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord, we place you, everybody, at the highest. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. For you alone are the great high priest. Jesus, we place you high above, high above all is, oh Lord, oh Lord, all is, oh, and we come to him, we come to him to worship right here at his feet, oh Lord, do I have a worshiper in the house, we sense, do you sense his sweet aroma. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we know this is the hour. Yeah, I pray. Supplication. Oh Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh Lord. Oh, and we come to you. We come to you to worship at your feet. Help me worship him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Why gaze the in the heaven? Somebody tell me if you no need to know or to know that Christ is reason. Yeah. For death. And hell could not hold him. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, let me hear you say crown him. Everybody, we crown him, crown him, we crown him, crown him, we crown him. King of king and lord of lord and royal majesty. I don't know if you know the thunder cup. Could you give me the thunder cup? It goes like this. YK, just clap. Thunder, thunder. Oh lord, oh lord, oh lord, oh lord, for death. Death and hell, they could not hold him in the grave. Oh, no, 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 no. Everybody crown him. We crown him. We crown him. We crown him. King of king and lord and royal majesty. Don't be afraid to say crown him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we place you at the highest place. Oh. For you alone are the great high priest, are the great high priest. Nobody else we place you high above all my circumstances. Oh, Jesus, oh, oh no. So we crown him, and so we crown him, we crown him, we crown him. Heal the royal majesty. Yeah, 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 yeah. We place you, we place you. We are, we are, we are. Ah, yes, please. Don't be afraid to lift those hands that belong to God. For you alone are the great high priest. We worship you, we place you. High above all my problems, Jesus, all my sicknesses, all my shortcomings, oh, and we crown him, we crown him, we crown him, we crown him, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I want you to hug yourself for me and give yourself a dance, come on, before the worlds were formed, hug up yourself, time embraced you, from everlasting, to everlasting, oh Lord, He reigns eternal. Oh, He reigns eternal. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh no, oh, forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. My lips shall lift, all lips shall praise His name. Glory, 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 glory. We play. 
bless you. Yes, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Bishop Goldman. My, thank you so much. It is my honor, I feel specially honored to say something about Reverend Ronald Goldman. A man of God, a man of sound doctrine. I remember the first time I think we met was in 2011 when my husband told me, a friend of his said, somebody was coming to Orlando and we decided to go. And when I found out that Pastor Benjamin is from the church, pastored by the Reverend Dr. Samuel Vassell, I said, I know this gentleman is coming with great doctrine. Because... ago, about 40 something years ago, that's why I got saved and um, the, the ministry of Dr. Vassal and his family got changed by him. And um, when I look back, that is what gives me the drive to do the work I do in Central Florida. But it's not about me, it's about Pastor Benjamin today. So... When we had our service for Jamaica's 50th celebration, Pastor Benjamin opened up the doors of the Metro West um, Church, Nazarene Church to us. And in an interview on Caribbean radio, Pastor Benjamin talked about the, well, he mentioned, because he's so humble. My, my husband asked him to give a little narrative about himself, and I think it was like two lines. And I'm thinking, no, he's more than two lines. So I listened to the interview, and he has been a pastor, experienced pastor, started in Jamaica, in Grand Cayman, in the Bahamas, and he was also assistant pastor at Bronx Bethany in um, New York. But we know the work of Pastor Benjamin in Metro West, so we don't even have to reflect on what happened before those years. At Metro West, he opened his doors, sound doctrine, as I said, feeding program, sports program. Um, he's in education. And in the interview, I see where he has plans to move into STEM. And we know the importance of that with driving young people for jobs for the next century. It is with Jesus' joy and a certain sense of pride that we bring to you Pastor Ronald Benjamin, who is accompanied by his wife and the Reverend Samuel Vassal and his beautiful wife, Angie. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome and you're in for a great message. God bless you. Well, since I became a pastor in the Church of the Nazarene, I understand that Sunday evenings there is the ceremonial Nazarene nap. <laughs> which which should be happening at <laughs> just about now. So if I sound a little drowsy, it's because it's my nap time. Well, let me
to greet all you wonderful folks, um, the Dawkins, Dr. Dawkins, pastor of this house, members, executive persons of the Jamaica American Association, and um, all my other friends, um, those whom I have not seen in a while due to COVID-19. And those of you that I might be seeing and don't know, it's you. <laughs> uh, Grace, you be sure you keep your mask. Because I don't want to take the wrong way at home. I want to thank you so much for extending to me this invitation to share in this very important celebratory service this evening. Um, as you've heard, um, Dr. Vassal and his wonderful wife, Angela, they are vacationing in Orlando. And he knows, they know they can't come to Orlando and spend any, um, say, reasonable time without you know, coming to my place. So we have been hanging since um, on Saturday. Just yesterday? Oh. Yeah. 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 So um, when I told him that, that, you know, I have an invitation to speak at a function, I mentioned the Jamaica American Association. I even dropped some names. And um, he has an appointment at the, maybe in the next 15 minutes that he has to be on. And when I mentioned names, you know, I said, well, it would be nice for you to come to see them. Um, it didn't seem as if it was going to happen. But when the name was, names were dropped again, and, um, you know, considering the, the, the history, um, it's like, well, <laughs> the, the story changed. Let's just say the outcome has changed. So, um, so delighted to be here with you this evening, and thanks again for the invitation. I must admit that as you speak, you know, those of you who, as you speak about Jamaica and the endearment that you have for this wonderful island, I share some of that sentiment, but I also have some resentment. Um, I am a country boy, born and raised in the hills of Portland. Yes. And my district, where I'm from, you don't pass there to go anywhere. When I was a teenager, uh, 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 one of the features of Western Portland was that it had the longest serving member of parliament at the time, Mr. Leopold Lynch from the Jamaica Labor Party. Or as we would say back home, in my neck of the woods, he was a laborite. And I recall that my community felt so neglected. I went to school in an Anglican church, Anglican church hall. And I didn't even know I was in a church until I heard somebody make, made mention about um, carrying up the priest on Sunday. And I said, where? He said, in here. I said, this is a church? Because we did everything there except praising God. And I recall um, in 19, I think 69, uh, yeah, 1969, uh, 1970, when Michael Manley was candidating for the prime minister office, that a helicopter brought him up there. And he looked at our school and the church and, and he said, if you elect me with the help of God, you will have a school. Well, I left that commu community in 1978. And up until that time, we're still in the Anglican church hall. So 
you can understand my resentment. They would come and ask us to vote for them. Make big promises. And being a country boy, agriculture was my life. So we planted all kind of crops, including that which they didn't want us to plant. And, and I found it quite interesting that during those days, there, I've seen several um, police raids come to my neck of the woods. Many times. I mean, 20, 30 police jeeps and vans and stuff, and they raided people's plantations. And they didn't only just, you know, cut down the ganja, but they chopped down people's yam. Everything that they planted, they chopped them down. And I live to see the day when marijuana is legalized. <laughs> and part of my story, as some of my friends know, is that when I, before I became a Christian, I was involved in the marijuana cultivation. Oh, yes. If it could grow, I would plant it. And when I got saved, I had a good number of mature plants. And I had to make a choice. Do I continue in this? Because you know if somebody steals your weed, you can report it to the police. You got to take out your loss. So I had to make a choice. Do I continue with this or do I say goodbye? So I went into my little plantation and I uprooted every plant, found a gully and just threw them down in there and say, so long, bye-bye. Yes, so long, bye-bye. So, um, yeah, I, I am not a big fan of some of the government people because I have found out from way back then that they, they, don't, they, don't always have a, they didn't always have our best interests at heart. So Jamaica, I am Jamaican to the bone. Yes, Jamaican to the bone. I'm so country that you would you would think of so <laughs> I'm so country that some of the things when I see and I'll be saying, what's that? I love my island, but some of the sentiments that some of you share, I differ. Because I still see some of those things happening. I grew up thinking that I couldn't learn anything because I, did, I never passed common entrance, well, never passed grade nine achievement test, never passed any of those exams. And I thought I was just so dunce. But then I understood later on that, oh, um, at one year there were 45,000 children who sat the common entrance exam and they only got space for 10,000. And some of those same children who didn't pass the common entrance but were sent to the secondary school, they ended up at University of the West Indies with those who went to high school. And I was like, okay. So it's not that we were dunce. We just didn't get the opportunity. And I experienced a kind of redemption Having not passed any of those exams, when I came to this country, I got an opportunity after, you know, going to my little Bible college in Jamaica and thing. I got an opportunity to sit in a theological seminary as a, an accredited New York theological seminary approved by the state of New York and was able to earn a master's degree, having not done, having not done a bachelor's degree. So, yes, my redemption, my redemption. So I don't hold it against Jamaica, but I just want to share some of the sentiments that some of you have. And um, my mom turned 99 last month. Yes. My mom had the opportunity to be the nanny for Marcus Garvey, his children. Yes. And she has lots of stories about her time there. My mom had the opportunity to go to a high school 
uh, to be sent to a high school when she was a, a young, young lady. But she discontinued her education because her um, dad fell ill and all her siblings had predeceased her. So she had to you know, discontinue her education and then she got into domestic work and so she became the nanny for uh, Margaret Savage's two sons. So, you know, I got lots of stories about those people. And um, one of the ways that we want to honor the contribution of our mother is to establish a foundation in her honor to be called the Willis Boyd Foundation with the aim of continuing to serve the people in communities like where I'm coming from, a place they call Bangor Ridge. Yes, you, you come from Bangor Ridge. Yeah. Um, born, it does, you know, yeah, that's where we come from. And we want to honor our mom because my mom served in various community areas. She was the president, I mean, the secretary of Jamaica, of the um, Jamaica Agricultural Society for years. I would go to agricultural shows, see the big pig, the big goat. <laughs> Yeah, we went to Denby, but sometimes we had it in Port Antonio, right? And, um, you know, so that's where my roots is. If you come to my house now, uh, you'll see I have everything that can grow in my backyard um, because I can't get away from my roots. Now, don't come looking for that. I'm a Christian. You won't even find tobacco. So, so much of that, I told my wife I'm going to speak for 20 minutes, and then I'm going to let you go. So, I must apologize for not reading carefully the theme, because your theme is reigniting a people for godliness. And ever since I heard of the theme, I started thinking about reigniting a people for righteousness. So, what I prepared and have been, you know, reflecting on is about righteousness. So I want to re be respectful of your theme. So I came up, I, you know, I came up with some. So hear me out. I'm going to read for you from um, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Paul's writing to his spiritual son. From verse 3, he says, If anyone advocates for different doctrine and does not agree with sound words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing. But he, who is, but he has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, out of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicion, and constant friction between men of depraved mind and, depri and deprived of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness with contentment, godliness actually is a means of gain when accompanied by contentment. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we can take nothing out of it either. If we have food or covering, with these we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men in ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, and some have longing for it, some by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But flee from these things, you man of God, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, who made you, and you made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who testified a good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. The words of Jesus. So Timothy was this young minister who Paul met on his second missionary journey in a place called Turkey. And the Bible says that uh, he was well recommended to Paul uh, by the brethren. We learn something about Timothy 
in the second letter, Paul's second letter to him, that his mother, we learn about his mother's name and his grandmother's name, but we also learn something more about that. The Bible tells us that Paul acknowledged that in Timothy's grandmother and in Timothy's mother, there was what he called sincere faith. Sincere faith. I submit to you this evening, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that the theme that we have, reigniting a people for godliness, is, is suggesting that godliness has gone out. You only reignite that which has been extinguished. Are we admitting, are we really admitting that godliness it has either burned low or has been extinguished? In the midst of this plethora of church growth, around every corner there is a church, a, a plethora of gospel music, more bishops than we could ever have, apostles, prophets, um, doctors by the dozens, but yet the flame has gone out. Is this an indictment on the church? Is this an indictment on the Christian community that we may be enjoying ourselves as People gathered every Sunday morning or on Sabbath day. We are enjoying ourselves, but we are not ensuring that there's a continuation of godliness. Are you surprised that Paul identified Timothy's parents, grandmother and mother, as the foundation for who Timothy was? I believe today that if we are going to reignite a people for godliness, we must focus on the family. We must go back to what happens at home. My heart broke about two months ago when I came across a group of men who were discussing reggae music and reggae artists. Now, that was, not, that was not, not what broke my heart. I drew close to them to hear what they were saying. And then I said to them, guys, Perhaps you should be thinking about how you can instruct the younger generation. One of them said to me, Go Efrande. We can't teach these children on the internet if we teach them. I'm like, what did he say? He said, yes. It's the internet that has to teach our children and this generation, not us. My words to him was, you have just made yourself redundant. Whether you are a father or a grandfather, you have made yourself redundant. It means you serve no purpose right now if you are going to rely on the internet to teach our children. We are in a crisis. We are in a crisis. It's not just the coronavirus and monkeypox. It's not just the economic. We are in a crisis for godliness. Because the homes, which should be the foundation for godliness, we have abandoned that. Yes, church. Yeah, we're big in church. We are very big in church. Some of us are not, not going to miss church. Not one service. Open the door, shut the door. But what a yard. My first spiritual awakening happened around our dining table. When my mom, who was not even going to church, but made sure every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, she gathered us around that table. We sang the old hymns. We read the scriptures. And one morning while we were there, she, as she was teaching us to pray, and I found myself crying. This 11-year-old this, this boy was crying. Who would ever cry for nothing? And I said to my mom, Mommy, why was I crying? And my mom, who was raised by a, grand, by a father who couldn't read but was a leader in the church, was raised by a mother who at 80-something, she was still reading her Bible without her glasses. My mom said to me, Son, 
the Lord touched your heart. How many of our parents today have any kind of spiritual awareness to be able to say to their children, you are hungering for God. What's happening with you is, is something deeper than the social impact. What's happening to you is something, it's not just puberty you're going through. How many of our parents are able to make their children aware of their spiritual awakening? How many of our parents are able to say to their children, like Eli, as back, is backslidden as he was, said, if you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Because there is no godliness without God. So it's more than being religious. It's more than being spiritual. It's more than being committed to my church. It has to be a relational thing. It can't be denominational. It can't be some kind of mysticism. No, it can't be, you know, it's me and Jesus alone. We have got to get back to the place where we are able to identify the spiritual temperature, identify what's happening, and be perceptive, be, be able to discern what's going on in individuals. I would even go as far as to say to us, we've got to stop inviting people to church. What? You're a pastor and you're saying that? How about if we begin to build relationships with people and stop being like salespeople who are only bent on selling a product, but invite people into a relationship with Jesus by becoming their friends Get to understand them. Connect with them. So when it comes to sharing the gospel, we are not going to be just seeking to make proselyte, but we are building relationship with these individuals. Some of us are very good at inviting people to church. We even invite saved people to church. Yeah, I know you're a Christian, but come to my church. What is that for? If it is not just for the attendance and the offering. Godliness has to be this quality of life that is more than the word. It has to be this quality of life that manifests itself in the ways that Paul made mention here. That this quality of life is going to allow us to be in pursuit of righteousness. As Paul says in verse 11, flee these things, you man of God, but pursue righteousness. For be in the pursuit of godliness. Be in the pursuit of faith. Be in the pursuit of love. Be in the pursuit of perseverance. Be in the pursuit of gentleness fight the good fight of faith lay hold of the eternal life to which you have been called godliness has to be more than my little feel good when i go to church but outside of church i am um, you know what i mean let godliness become the identification mark. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Potiphar's wife tried a thing with Joseph. And you are all Bible believers. You read the story. You know. This cougar. This hoe. This trophy wife. Because that's I think that's what she was. Her husband is big man in in Pharaoh's thing and you know so here comes this Hebrew slave that she thought hmm hunky fellow and when she tried to seduce him and the boy says no ma'am no ma'am 
My master put everybody in this house, everything in this house, under my charge except you. And when she kept on by, he said, no. The Bible said he refused to be with her. And when she saw her opportunity, where she thought, okay, now, now let me see what you're going to do. He, he ran, he left his clothes. Joseph said these words, how can I do this wickedness and sin against my God? Many of us, many of you, or somebody you know, who grew up in Jamaica, yes, part of the church, Big in youth meeting, big in that, but come to America. Come to America where nobody knows you. Now all of a sudden, Christianity doesn't matter anymore. Godliness doesn't matter anymore. Righteousness doesn't matter anymore. Money takes over. Hear the words of Paul. He says, listen. It is godliness when it is mixed with contentment that it is great gain. Listen, folks, you know, as Paul says here, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we will take nothing out. Of course, as achieve all we can. Go for the wonderful things. Go for the nice car. Go for the big house. But in the process, do not compromise godliness. No. Uncompromising life. Godliness must be the hallmark of our lives. Brothers and sisters. And if we are going to reignite a people for godliness, it must be the same people who were ignited before. If the persons were not ignited before, you can't reignite them. So we, the Christians, are the, we, the church people, we are the ones who need to be reignited. Amen. Before we are reunited, we need to be reignited. And you know where it starts? It starts with our faith. Paul says, your grandmother, your mother, in them there was this sincere faith. And I know it is in you also. We need to get back to our roots, understand what godliness is, and that this is, this is not some sort of an elitism. Because there are those of us who once used to be view Christianity as this kind of aristocratic thing. You know, el elitism. So you, you can't even... <laughs> You can't even say Lord in church. You have to say Lord. <laughs> can't speak patwa in church. Speak properly. It's elitism. Christianity is not elitism. We learn the Queen's English or whatever English it is, but it doesn't mean that we forget our vernacular. So somebody say, say you know, I heard about this little man, this man, he was praying in church and, and, and he, 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 he was not schooled as some people are. And so he, he, things at his home were, were in a mess. And so he went in prayer and somebody overheard him praying at the altar. And he said, Lord, help us business a yard for things chaka chaka. There are going to be those who probably want to pray the same thing. But, you know, dear Lord, you know how complicated my life is. So, godliness is not elitism. Godliness has to do with the God who sees me. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Hagar, when Hagar was abused and, and, and 
returned out of her house, out of Abraham's house with her with her child. And Hagar was there thinking that she, it, it's over. She was there crying. God appeared to her and, and she, she uttered, you are the God who sees me. We must be a people who will always recognize that the God with whom we have to do is the God who sees us. He sees me wherever I am. So, people of God, let's be ready for God to light the fire. Be ready for God to light the fire. Amen. It's a fire that purges. It's a fire that prepares us for, to, do a, to, to burn. And let me tell you something, folks. Fire does not burn for itself. Every light that you see does not, is, is not for itself. It is shining for somebody else. Our fire is not only for ourselves. There's a world that wants to feel the warmth. There's a world that wants to see the light. Are you aware that in America, the church has been on decline? Christianity is in decline in America. Rapidly. And some of us are still content to hang on to you know, the old traditions and so, I mean I see some of you in your hearts here God bless you <laughs> I remember the days you could never go to church without a hat uh, if you did somebody going to find some man on your head Christianity godliness is a relational thing and we don't want to systematize that which is relational. Let's not turn godliness into a system. Let's keep it as a relational thing. There is something between God and I, irrespective of which denomination or church I belong to. I could be Pocomania, but I belong to God. I have a relationship with him. Yes, my friend, let godliness be that which defines us. Not an accessory to our lives. So when you see me, you must be able to say, there goes a godly person. Amen? Yes. I was very thrilled the other day when Brown University awarded a doctorate to Shaggy. I was elated. But then I thought, hmm, are all his lyrics safe for the liquor ears in the back seat? <laughs> are all the lyrics, are all the lyrics of his songs safe for the liquor ears in the back seat? But yet, it's a cultural thing. Do you see where our culture is? We've got to have a Christian culture, a Jesus culture that goes counter to the prevailing culture. And godliness is that which we need. A culture that goes against the prevailing culture where you feel okay to take your stand and say no for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly passions, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? In this present world. Godliness has to be the ground on which we stand to be dissenters. Dissenter. You may say that's what I want, but as a Christian, I dissent. Heard somebody preaching on that text one time, and he says, You gotta be like the, 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 the cricketer when the pace bowler runs up and delivers a fast ball. He goes, the, the batsman goes forward and says, No. We say no to ungodliness, we say no to worldly passions. Whether it's legislated or not, we go countercultural to those things. 
We are not going to be a people of godliness if we are carried by every wind that blows and go with the stream. No, we have got to go in the opposite direction when those people are going the other direction because we are a people of godliness. Simply because we are godly, let's live godly. Let's live godly. Not just the title. Live godly. So listen, if you happen to see me somewhere where you know a godly person not supposed to be, it is your responsibility to come up to me and say, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Pastor Benji? Uh, no, you, you're not, you're not criticizing. You're, you're asking me a question. What are you doing here? Because this is not a place that I would expect to see you. As a responsible, godly person. But don't leave the place now and say, you wouldn't guess who I see where. So if it was a if, if it was an issue for me to be there, what are you doing there? <laughs> so let's make godliness the hallmark of our lives. God bless you. Pastor Benjamin, I am not going to add anything to what you said. I just want to say thank you for the charge. As godly people, we need to live godly. And I like the way you brought that out. Reigniting means that we were once there. So for your time today, for honoring us with your presence and for the message, we're just going to give you a little token to... We present this little certificate to you, thanking you for being here and with your, your beautiful wife today. Dr. Leaford has done an excellent job keeping the program tight. And um, on behalf, he's our ninth president. I'll always remember that. Dr. Leaford, ninth president, and um, Dr. Dawkins, what, I can't remember what number he was. We have two former presidents of the Jamaican American Association. Thank you so much. Pastor Goburn, Bishop Goburn. Wow, that's good. You see, we're having fun here, and we want him to do more too. So it's just an incentive for you to come again and give us more. Because of time, we'll move along 
Today, I want to especially thank, where's Adriana? Okay, Lady Adriana Clark. She is such a gem. Always willing, always ready. Thank you so much for coming. And on behalf of the Jamaican American Association, I present this to you. And I'm coming down to take a picture with you. And we want to thank this church that I think this is the third time the North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today we have the fewest number in attendance, but we understand because of COVID and so on. But they have opened their doors to us. Just like um, Metro West, North Orlando is a community church. So we want to thank you so much for that. And this year we have Dr. Arlene Thomas, an educator, yeah, who has been the contact, the person working from the church. So um, Dr. Thomas and your team, thank you so much. So on behalf of the Jamaican American Association, we present this to you. We want to acknowledge everyone who came out today. I think earlier we mentioned some names. I am not. But we see our sister association, the JCC, is also here. And um, thank you for coming out. Yes. And I'll let the chair. We want to acknowledge all the individuals from the Jamaican American Association who worked hard on putting this together. Dr. Dawkins sharing it. And when your name is called, please just stand and be acknowledged. Um, I'm not sure who's, yes. We have Ms. Joan Edgehill, Entertainment Chair, or Fundraising and Development Chair. <laughs> Mrs. Marjorie Brownall, First President. We have Mr. Carol Grant, will be collecting the offering in a little bit. We have Dr. Pat, who is outside. And um, he'll, he'll tell you who I'm missing. Right. You know, when we start calling names, we might just miss names. Um, but we have um, Minister Pauline Co Dawkins Cole, a cousin, right? You know, we, she's a sensational worshiper and prays with all different kind of ministry. So we are very thankful for her. And anybody else? We, we have Robert, the um, vice president of the JCC, and other people came along with him. And let me make sure. Anybody, anybody else from any other group here that want to recognize you? Yeah. We are with Pastor... Pauline, okay. Okay. And Miss Beryl, 93 years old. Son of Miss Beryl. She's still driving, I think. Still driving, right? 93 years old. Okay. All right. So, again, we want to, as we be coming down, uh, we're making sure that, you know, my, my wife mentioned that this is the smallest group that we have had here, but it's one of the best. This one was good, right? Good sermon, good singing, good accommodation, 
everything is good, right? So we are very glad to be here with you, okay? Yeah. Okay, and did you say mayor? Did you mention mayor? And I, mayor, um, one of our newest members, and she is our videographer for, oh, and Kaneda and the kids. Wonderful, thank you so much. And we have Maxine, is that Maxine from our 79ers? Oh, yes. Wow, thank you so much for, God, for coming God, out. Yes, right? Maxine on 79 At this time, I'll turn over to um, Dr. Lee Fad. Yes. Talent and Fashion Show, Caribbean American Heritage Month. Thank you so much, Maxine. And the lady is right here. We'll do this later. So thank you, thank you. And I'll turn over to Dr. Lee Fad. I think the last song for um, closing out offering, and then we close out. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is this the seven days? OK. And for the offering. Can't have church without offering, right? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to have the, uh, se the North Orlando Seventh Day Adventist Church um, group come up, and um, we'll just take a moment while you get your offerings together. <laughs> Praise God. Good evening. I, I just wanted to say, I know it's early, but happy Independence Day to all. Um, I, I'm going to tell you a little secret real quick. Birthplace in Philadelphia, but my background is Jamaica. <laughs> and, you know, the one thing that I have to say I thank God for is that is being able to celebrate with the family. I don't, I don't consider you as friends. I consider you as family because we all are one, no matter what. And to thank God, you know, for that, to, you know, let everybody know we are one in Christ. So let's continue to encourage and pray for one another. But always, God comes first in everything.
Oh, that was so wonderful. Give her another round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. We heard all different kind of singing. And this one was very, very good. It was like the icing on top of a great cake. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, the um, North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist Church have some great singers. That's all I can say. <laughs> hallelujah. And God has blessed Jamaica with some great talent also. So we have come to the end of another wonderful uh, church service. Um, it's been the Jamaican American Association has been around for the last 37 years and still going strong. And we've made it through COVID. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Let's just uh, stand up for a closing prayer for the offering and a benediction. Let's bow our head in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. It is our privilege to return unto you a small amount of all the gifts that you have blessed us with, O oh Lord God. We give it to you as an offering, O oh Lord God, not because it's mandatory that we have to do it, O oh Lord God, but of the freeness of our heart, we give free will offerings unto you, O oh Lord God, as a tribute because you are God and our King, and we want to see the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ done on this earth, O oh Lord God, because that's our mission, O oh Lord God. You said, go into all the world and make disciples of every nation, O oh Lord God. And this is our duty. So we are so thankful. We just ask you, O oh Lord God, to bless and multiply, O oh Lord God, the storehouses of all the givers, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I know may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his sweet peace. And you're going out and you're coming in and you're rising and you're laying down. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And we have some refreshments in the back there for you. So don't go home without eating something. God bless you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee Pat. So, if you were the singers on the, on the program, we want to take a nice shot of you as memory. And, and remember to listen out for the announcement for our 6th of August, right? And support us. We ask you to give us support, right? So, there are flyers out there. And listen out for the, on the radio and in the, for the announcement and change, okay? So if you're in the pro, we ask you to, so we take a picture of you. Can you put on a 